views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Lime Talk Radio with Dr. Pat Vasily. Epic healing for an epic life. This inspiring show highlights leading edge solutions, groundbreaking research, headline topics, and tools for holistic healing and wellness. This hit show is dedicated to raising awareness, promoting advocacy and prevention, and supporting initiatives for optimal health. Dr. Pat is passionate and focused on life saving results reaching far beyond Lyme disease, providing a forum for powerful stories, heart opening experiences, and hope activated solutions. Dr. Pat will shine a light on the many shades of Lyme disease fueled by a body mind spirit remedy now here's your host dr pat you today i am like super super excited about today's show and for many of you out there you know you know we started to talk about Lyme disease infectious diseases but in a different way like over 10 years ago, actually, I used to say over 10 years ago, that is not even true anymore. It was like more like over like 12 years ago. And what we have now learned is a little bit more, um, but there's lots more for us to learn. That's why I love doing what I do. And I get to speak with some of the most incredible people, you know, people that are not just carving out a place in the field of human potential wellness and uh, epic living, but are literally creating a brand new paradigm for the way we talk about health, the way we speak about wellness, the vision, the images we hold, and more importantly, are taking a message out there like today's show that is unedited uh, and is not controlled by someone that's worried about a sponsor that may have an offense about what we're ready to talk about. It is called Welcome to the World of Independent Talk Radio, one of the fastest growing phenomenon in the world today. And unlike some of our other colleagues in this arena, yep, we're not sitting here waiting for somebody to come along and buy us out. We're ready to grow and continue to take this message out worldwide as we've been for quite some time. Why? Because you all, again, have voted this network number one by the people and have said, don't go away. We want more. And we started Lime Talk Radio and the first Lime show back in 2005. Today, let me introduce you to Dr. Carol Osborne joining me here today. Now, look, when I get to speak about Dr. Carol, one of the things that I'm going to tell you about right now is that this is someone that has stepped out into the world, integrated vet- veterinarian and author, pioneer anti-aging medicine, longevity research for pets, created and patented the original pause. And I am just beginning because when a passion and a purpose grabs onto you, the only answer is the way that Dr. Carroll has answered. It is more or less get out of our way. We are here with passion, purpose and transformation. Today's show, are you ready? Tackling ticks and Lyme disease in pets. Yes. Why is that important? We're going to find out. If, you, if your pet loves the great outdoors, as many of ours have, ticks can become an issue for you and your pet. And what do you want to do about it? Dr. Carroll, great to have you here. Well, thank you, Pat. I'm delighted to join you. You know, I, I grew up in New Jersey, right? And um, and born in New York, grew up in New Jersey. And I never thought in a million years that you and I would be sitting here, both of us, passionate about creating a brand new level of awareness. But here's what I love to say about this. I don't even know what I don't know. How far have we gone, in your opinion, to understanding the implication and effect of ticks, Lyme disease, or, or any uh, more or less vector, vector-borne vector diseases. Wh- what have you discovered over the decades? 
Well, the the, re, the reality is uh, at, at this point that ticks transmit over ten different diseases mm. to uh, other animals as well as humans in, in this country, and the incidence is rising because we've got very much improved diagnostics and laboratory testing, we're now able to attain a positive diagnosis, whereas in the past, about 30% of the cases remained undiagnosed. So the fact of the matter is, is the tick population carrying diseases like Lyme's disease and others Mm -hmm. continues to increase. I can honestly tell you that last year, as a single veterinarian that really doesn't even advertise, I personally had over 25 cases of tick-borne diseases that ranged from Alaska all the way down to Florida. And one of the really probably, I think, the worst thing about these tick-borne diseases is that in many, many, many instances, they go undiagnosed until the animal becomes so sick, so mm-hmm. lethargic, n- no appetite, et cetera, that you know, they end up in an emergency room or, or in another veterinary office. And after extensive testing, you know, s- somebody w- with any luck will, will find out that the animal uh, has, has a tick-borne disorder. And I think w- what I personally have been seen more and more, and I think it's a matter of education. Mm-hmm. Is I had a, a woman the other day, we, we did a telephone consultation. Her dog's in liver and kidney failure. Wow. And this is a dog that not only came up positive for Lyme's disease, but also for another tick-borne disorder called anaplasmosis. Mm. It was suggested to the woman a couple months ago that they run a 21-day trial with an antibiotic called doxycycline, which is, in fact, the treatment of choice for these tick-borne disorders. The woman didn't feel it was very important, and by the time she reached me, her, her dog was trying to die. Mm. So prompt diagnosis, um, you know, getting educated, learning what to look for as well as what to do by shows, Dr. Pat, just like yours. I think that education is the key to understanding as well as as preventing uh, diseases transmitted by ticks, which with good prevention can easily be prevented. Wow. And you know what I love about this, Dr. Carroll? Here we are, and you and I are in different parts of the country right now. And here we can come together, you know, in one voice, so to speak, with uh, about something you just mentioned a, a bit ago, awareness. What I love about what you're sharing and in how different you are uh, for, for so many people out there, they're thinking, well, wait a minute, veterinarian, what, wait a minute, what are we doing here? What does integrative mean? So what we're saying is, look, we're looking for new ways to understand the complete and whole picture of healing. Isn't Absolutely. that what you've discovered? Isn't that what you're doing? A- a- absolutely. Um, y- y- you know, the, the pets and people today are, are so deeply interconnected and through a pet's sixth sense, they, they know what you're thinking just at the same time you do, even though people don't don't realize that. So be- because pets have truly become a member of the household, their connection to that two legged human um is a, is a very tight, wonderful, loving connection. And I think that pet owners out there absolutely want to understand and they're ready and willing to do whatever it takes when it comes yeah. to improving the life and health care of, of their four-legged friend. Yeah. And, you know, this is what I want to say to everybody out there. We have a bunch of ways for you to get questions in here at the show. First of all, uh, we have a toll free number, 1-800-930-2819. For those of you that are listening through your smartphone or if you're listening online, very easy. Go to TransformationTalkRadio.com. And on the right hand side, you can type in a question and we're going to bring that question right up here on the show Uh, or go to the DrPatShow.com. And put your question in there as well as Lime Talk Radio. We have made this uh, so incredibly easy for all of you out there in getting your questions in here, getting you some assistance and some advice. When we come back, I want to talk to Carol about Dr. Carol about, okay, wait a minute. What are the myths? What is it that we think we know about tick-borne diseases, Lyme disease? What do we think we know? 
And what are the revelations? What are we finding out now? Um, as a matter of fact, did you even know that there is a test that your animal friend could get? And when should you take a look at that? Well, that's why I got Dr. Carol Osborne joining me here today. When we come back, we're going to give you her website, let you know how you can find out more about her, let you know how you can tap into her blog and much more. Stay tuned, everyone. This is an awesome, awesome show. 1-800-930-2819. We'll be right back. <laughs> The 24th Annual WOW Conference, United We Change the World. Featured guests are Dr. Christine Page on Creative Dragon Energy. Dr. Susan Shumsky will show you how to awaken your third eye. And Mira Kelly will present a two-day intensive workshop on Beyond Past Lives. This February 11th through the 15th, go to thewowconference.org. That's the W-O-W conference.org. Transformation Talk Radio is dedicated to the education and awareness of Lyme disease. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Lyme Talk Radio. I'm Dr. Pat, joined here by Dr. Nusheen Darvish. Dr. Pat Vasily and Dr. Nusheen Darvish will be bringing the most innovative, groundbreaking information, research, treatment innovations, and stories from those it affects every day. I'm so excited to be talking about this. We have so much to share. Dr. Darvish and I are planning to do is connect the dots. People suffering with all sorts of chronic disease. It's time. It is time for them to transform. Tune into Lime Talk Radio and help keep our mission strong. For the loyal listeners out there that have been listening to this incredible show on Lyme disease, we are not going to let you down. We're going to come through stronger and enrich the platform for Lyme disease awareness through Lyme Talk Radio. The message will continue. The conversations will become stronger and the healing epic. Hi, I'm Tim Darter. And I'm Steve Kramer. Join us on Spirit Fire Radio. Discover how to add the mechanics of meditation to your day. And watch yourself connect in a whole new way. Find the amazing moments in life's routines that often pass us by. Add to your awareness with Spirit Fire Radio. Tune in each Wednesday at 9 a.m. for your weekly guide to practical mindfulness. And to learn more, visit www.spiritfireradio.com. Enlightening, humorous, and compassionate. Listen live to The Kelly Ballard Show, insight and inspiration from the great beyond. Kelly is a fourth-generation medium and intuitive who covers topics ranging from grief, spirit guides, and listening to your intuition. Kelly can help you get answers and guidance from the other side with a little bit of humor and a lot of healing. Tune in to The Kelly Ballard Show, Thursdays at 1 p.m. Pacific Time, here on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Get into it for 2016. Do you want more prosperity, clarity, energy, and balance in your life? Join Lynn Brown now through March for one of her amazing workshops, each focusing on a key part of living your best life. For more information and to register for one of these amazing workshops, visit lynnbrownevent.com. That's lynnbrownevent.com. And get into it this 2016 with Lynn Brown. Yeah, there we go. Yeah, we're we're breaking Justin in here. So that's what's going on here. We're just like w- sitting here thinking about, wait a minute, we had to have a moment of meditation because guess what? What Dr. Carol and I are about to talk about, you may or may not have heard before. And what I want to say about that is that for many of you, um, this is a conversation you probably didn't think in your lifetime that you would have. But here's what we want to say about it. It's one of the most important conversations of our time. Dr. Carol, before we jump ahead here, I would love for you to take a minute. And first of all, you know, there are many ways people can find out more about you. Would you please tell us what some of those are? 
Absolutely. You can find us online. We're at chagrinfallspetclinic.com, which is kind of a mouthful. You can also find us online at drcarol.com, which is drcarol.com. You can give us a call toll-free. We answer questions and offer pet health consultations. The toll-free phone is one 866 Dr. Carol, which is 866-372-2765. We've got a beautiful little integrative veterinary clinic here in Chagrin Falls, Ohio, about 30 minutes east of Cleveland. And if anybody lives within the area, our doors are open six days a week. Wow. Okay. Dr. Carol, I got to ask you this question. I want to talk a bit about you if we could. You know, here you are in the middle of the storm, right? And I I said something that may or may not be true. I said something like if you go back, you know, what is it, 13 years when when we first started to to do this thing called positive independent radio uh, myself, I came down with an illness and it changed the direction of the show. What has this been journey been like for you? Because now we're hearing Lyme disease, Lyme disease. We're having celebrities come out. Uh, And even with all of that, we're in a state of denial. But what has this journey been like for you in, in, in being a doctor and not only bringing a level of awareness, but convincing people that this actually even exists? You know, that, that's, that's, a, that's a great question. And, and the truth of the matter is, is we try to educate people. We, you know, we try to make them aware of, you know, ticks and mosquitoes and fleas and all the different parasitic diseases that pets can be affected with. Of course, in the case of tick-borne diseases, Lyme's being the most popular. Um, what many people don't realize is that if your dog would have Lyme's disease or one of the other nine diseases that can be transmitted through the bite of a tick, if that dog, if you take your dog out for a walk and he urinates and a couple drops of that urine happens to, for example, splash on your leg, then you, the owner, can also uh, get, get Lyme's disease. Um, and Dr. Pat, I don't know how you personally contracted it, but other than being directly bitten by a tick, generally contamination through, through a pet, generally a dog, occasionally a cat, um, it, it is a big deal, something that pet owners most definitely need to be aware of. So we, we try to tell people these things. We, we mention things to wear, you know, to wear long sleeves, uh, in particular to wear light colored clothing because ticks are a little easier to spot that way. Um, there are different repellents. The front line, for example, is, is a repellent that's effective to help repel ticks uh, for, fle- for dogs as well as cats. And simply taking your hands and running them over your pet's body twice a day in the morning and then evening. And if you feel a little something that doesn't look like it should be there, then investigate. And if it is a tick, slide on a pair of gloves and remove the tick promptly and carefully. Throw it in a little bottle of alcohol and bring it to your physician or obviously to your to your veterinarian to try to obtain a, di- a diagnosis. So we have the prevention and the educational aspect. I think the worst thing when it, when it comes down to my personal thoughts are the dogs that have been bitten by ticks. And it could be years and years ago. It could be when they were a puppy. I, I had a a client with, with Lyme's disease in Alaska. And I said, gosh, I, I wouldn't have thought there were any chicks in Alaska. Well, wouldn't you know, the puppy was born in Michigan. Wow. wow. So, it, wow. It's, um, you know, they, they can be bitten, and yet the disease does not manifest itself for X period of time later. And because it's such an insidious disease, you know, what happens is the pets slowly, slowly go into kidney failure. And as the kidney failure starts to mount, then the animals lose their red blood cells and they become anemic. So their gums get pale and they get weak. They become a little bit lethargic. Uh, they might go. They might go off their food. And then if you let a little bit more time continue, yeah. then then the liver becomes affected. So in many cases, these people, out of desperation, yeah. when they've tried thirteen kinds of food and everything else they can think of, they come in and say, you know, my pet's a little bit mopey. And he or she's been off his food. And that's the point when you hope that that veterinarian 
starts taking proper diagnostic testing, which isn't hard. It's just done through through a blood withdrawal. There are many veterinarians that have some of these little SNAP 4DX tests in their actual office, Mm -hmm. um, in which case the popular diseases are lichiosis, anaplasmosis, Lyme's disease, and Rocky Mountain spotted fever, the four most common disorders transmitted through the bite of a tick can be diagnosed right in the, right in the veterinarian's office in, in, less, in less than five minutes. You know, in humans, they, they get, uh, where, where the, you get the bite, you sort of get that, that characteristic starburst rash, and then they, they, they talk about a rotating leg lameness where you, you know, your left leg might hurt and then your right leg might hurt. And they talk about those signs in animals as well. Yeah. Personally, I can tell you as a veterinarian for well over 20 years, I have not personally witnessed any shifting leg lameness uh, because of a tick-borne disorder in a dog. Usually, uh, for me, they they come in with the lack of appetite, real mopey, real lethargic, and just not doing well. Yeah. And, you know, we have a question from Susan, and Susan's actually asking these questions. Susan from New Jersey. Thank you, Susan. Susan's asking the question, what are the symptoms we should look for in our dogs? And we've named a couple of them. Uh, We have pulled several ticks off them last summer and are not sure what to even look for. This is a great thanks, uh, Susan says. This is a great question, Dr. Carroll, because even though you're pulling ticks, people are not quite sure of what ticks carry the disease or not. Most of the time we're thinking those ticks that bite and get big old fat, those are the ticks. But those are really not the ticks, are they? Not, not, not really. Uh, some of the more common ticks, the brown dog tick and the black deer, uh, the black legged tick, also referred to as the deer tick, are, are some of the more common species uh, that, that carry these diseases. But Susan, what I would say to you is, Ticks have to be on your pet for at least 36 hours, uh, a day and a half, in order to transmit disease. So if you're out in, in wooded areas, of course, where ticks love to drop down because they're on a bush or a branch, and they just sort of drop down and take a ride, of course, the reason they drop down and take a ride is because in order for the tick to reproduce, they have to have a blood meal, kind of like a flea. Mm-hmm. So they, they drop down, they take their blood meal, and then, of course, you know, they, they can lay, lay more eggs uh, up to 5,000 at a time, which is kind of scary. But, Susan, if you simply run your hands over your pet twice a day, if you find something there, remove it quickly, yeah. put it in a little jar of alcohol, and take it into your veterinarian. Because you said that you've taken multiple ticks off your dog, I think, yeah. last year, my yeah. suggestion would simply be to go to your veterinarian's office and tell them exactly what you told us and ask them if they'd be kind enough to run a SNAP for DX. And again, that will write in, write in your veterinarian's office. That will test for those four really common disorders transmitted by ticks. Uh, The other thing that you can do is simply ask your veterinarian to pull a a complete blood sample, which we refer to as a complete blood count and a chemistry. And that chemistry section looks at liver function and kidney function. The other part of the blood looks at the bone marrow, the red cells and the white cells. And what, what we see Again, with these tick-borne disorders, is you have low red blood cells. That's the anemia. The kidney numbers, that BUN and creatinine, start to rise. And shortly thereafter, the liver values will, will also rise. There is another very comprehensive test for ticks that will go through all of them and give you specific antibody titers to document infection which is a little more pricey, but for someone that might be very concerned, it's an option available to anyone directly through your veterinarian. Yeah. Wow. Thank you. What a great question, Susan. Thank you so much. And we are taking your questions out there. For those of you who want to call in and chime in directly with us, we have toll free number right here. 1-800-930-2819. 1-800-930-2819. I am so thrilled to tell everybody that it is a great honor and uh, privilege to have Dr. Carol Osborne joining me here today. And we are really 
expanding our knowledge and our conversation through a level of awareness, but also information is so seriously important, as Dr. Carroll and I both know, to really answer your questions, get the word out. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, what we're going to talk about is, look at, you know, what can we best know for treatments? How do we even begin that process? What is it that Dr. Carroll has discovered countless cases where integrative, integrative science, integrative medicine may provide a solution that many of us do not even know about. That's why she's Dr. Carol. I'm Dr. Pat. We're going to take a short break, everybody. Fasten your seatbelt when we come back. Continue to send us your questions at transformationtalkradio.com or call in. We'll be right back, everybody. Planet Radio with Dr. Kelly Ness. This hit show will illuminate your senses and empower you beyond your daily stressors and hardships. Renowned psychologist and author Dr. Kelly will captivate you with far-reaching topics and amazing guests as you wake to the greatest version of yourself. Learn to tap into your intuitions, think critically about our world, heal emotional and psychological wounds, and follow your passions to live your dreams. The Lucid Planet, welcome home. Visit lucidplanetradio.com for more information. Are you ready for a radical shift in your way of being? Are you seeking a more deeply connected and fulfilling life? Awakened Living Radio is a show dedicated to helping you embrace a life filled with profound peace, connection, and happiness. TJ Woodward is passionate about helping you find your clarity, balance, and purpose. Join co-host TJ Woodward and Dr. Pat Basile on the first Monday of every month at 11 a.m. Pacific Time for Awakened Living Radio on TransformationTalkRadio.com. There are so many resources out there for meditation. But did you know that Atana's Heart Earth Healing Meditation is available for you for free? Yes, that's right. You can receive this free healing meditation today from Atana Vadili. All you need to do is visit his website, atanamethod.com. That's A-T-A-A-N-A method.com and sign up. You will receive your free meditation instantly. That's atanamethod.com. What is a master soul gardener? With Nomi Bahar, you can be one too. Her revolutionary Gates of Power method is a comprehensive program that addresses every aspect of yourself and gives you the tools to tend to the seeds of your soul's garden. Let Nomi guide you through and beyond what's holding you back and help you embrace the life you've always dreamed of. To learn more about upcoming classes and workshops, visit gatesofpower.com today. In to Sheer Alchemy with Leslie Fontaine on TransformationTalkRadio.com and get ready to stir up your passions, remove your blocks, and shift into an entirely new existence. Speaker, teacher, channel, clairvoyant, Leslie Fontaine is a transformation catalyst who channels a powerful energy from source to catapult listeners into living the life they were born to live. Whether it's shifting from scarcity to abundance, from emotional pain into joy or from illness into health. Leslie will help you step into the true essence and power of all that you are with the help of the Ascended Masters and Archangels. You will not be the same. Visit TransformationTalkRadio.com for show dates and times and LeslieFontaine.com to say yes to explosive abundance. Everybody, it's great to have you back here. For those of you out there, you want to find out more about me, you can go to the drpatshow.com or you can go to limetalkradio.com. Uh, Dr. Uh, Carol here, Dr. Osborne, is going to give you a little bit more information again. And then we're going to tackle one of the toughest questions I think we have in this arena. Dr. Carol, one more time, what's the best way for people to find out more about you? You can find us online at Chagrin Falls. PetClinic.com. You can give us a call toll-free 
at 1-866-DR-CAROL-372-2765. You can also find us online at drcaroldrcarol.com. Awesome. Um, one of the things that we were talking about before the break um, and, and that you and I were talking about before the break is that, sure, there are a lot of things about Lyme disease that, you know, many, many people are afraid of. Uh, but one of the things I shared with you is something that we're seeing really emotionally, let's call it, you know, and even psychologically for people is that even though they may not be feeling exactly great uh, or they may see some things in their pets, it's almost as if it's better not knowing than to actually get the test. Uh, and I, I don't know, are you finding, I know we're finding that in the human community, but I would imagine it's the kind of the same syndrome. Uh, or, or do we actually treat our pets better than we treat ourselves? Well, believe it or not, Dr. Pat, there are many out there who will tell you that people will treat their pets long before they will treat themselves. The thing that I'd like to point out is whether you're a person or a pet, the sooner you find out that you have something, in this case, a tick-borne disorder, the sooner something can be done to nip it in the bud. And the problem with having a tick-borne disorder, such as Lyme's disease, and allowing it to go undiagnosed in a dog, in a cat, in a person, is that the disease and, and the, it keeps multiplying and getting worse and worse and worse, and the organ compromise, kidney disease, liver disease, anemia, uh, in addition to fever, loss of appetite, anorexia, shifting leg lamenesses, etc., you, f- you feel terrible. Now, again, as soon as you have a positive diagnosis, as a human, you can take the doxycycline. It's a very simple antibiotic. You take it twice a day for 21 to 28 days. Then you see your doctor and you take another little blood test, which again will give you a titer, which is a numerical value, which will show you if whether or not active infection does or does not remain within your body. And in my experience, in most cases, if you are able to get the diagnosis earlier, the faster you treat it, the better you'll be, and you will not be plagued with these horrible conditions for for the rest of your life. And that applies to your dog as well. Um, in my experience, as far as dogs, for example, if you, you, once the liver and kidney failure sets in, mm-hmm. if the doxycycline is not started, uh, it, it will be fatal. The, the, the animal w- will, in fact, die. Oh, wow. Wow. So it, it's not something to play around with. Um, we, we have effective therapies that can absolutely address and, and conquer the problem. But the thing I'd like to point out is the best thing to do is to pr- prevent it in the first place. And I, I thought maybe we could talk a couple minutes, yeah. Dr. Pat, I about, about how to avoid ticks. Yeah. Yeah. Let's talk about it because, I mean, this is really the best defense right here, what we're getting ready to talk about. And then, you know, and let's really talk about the myth a minute, too. I wish you would address it because I don't know if you know this or not, Dr. Carroll, but believe it or not, I live in a state who on their health website literally says Lyme disease doesn't live here. The ticks don't live here. The only cases we have are people that move to the state. Now. You are, you're a veterinarian, right? I don't know how that tick knows not to come to Washington state, but maybe, maybe it would be good to talk a little bit about this and how to prevent it. Well, ticks, like, like most other parasites have different areas of the country, whether it's hot or cold or, or wet or moist or damp that, that, that they prefer. So the ticks started in the Great Lakes. You know, Michigan, Connecticut, um, and, and for many years, we're primarily confined to that area. But as all things go in life, they have simply started to spread. And as I said, a year ago, I had cases of tick disease 
from Alaska all the way down to Florida. Yeah. And because we're a very, a very mobile society, people have traveled, jump on the plane and go here and there. And it's not just the person that travels today. It's also the pet. Mm -hmm. And hence, diseases that were once restricted to the Great Lakes are now everywhere. So although Washington State may not be the, 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 the key state that a tick would like to live in, uh, don't think that there are no ticks in Washington State, because I would beg to differ with you. <laughs> right. Now, now when it comes to prevention, uh, one thing I will mention is that there is a Lyme's disease vaccine. There's a vaccine for people. There is also a vaccine available for dogs. The vaccine is highly controversial. In fact, some uh, some say that the vaccine can actually cause the disease. So whether or not you elect to receive the vaccine for yourself or for your pet, that's something where you should have a, a serious conversation with either, you know, your doctor or physician. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. As far as prevention, okay, um, remember, chicks enjoy wooded areas. Yeah. They, they like the warm, humid type type climates. Um, so what can you do if, if you if you got to go out in the woods and, and take a hike? Well, it's easy. Wear a long sleeve shirt, wear long pants, and if you need to, tuck them into your socks or your shoes. If you've got long hair, tuck it up under a, under a hat. Um, and again, apply a tick repellent to, to yourself as, as well as to your pet. And remember, light colored clothes are great to wear because it's just easier to see the ticks that are dark. Okay, do a daily, a visual inspection of your clothes, your body, and your pet twice a day in the morning and in the evening. Uh, if if you you know are in a tick infected area, now ticks have a few different life stages. The larva and nymph are very small. You could easily mistake it for a freckle or even a little piece of dirt. Um, ticks like to feed where? At the back of your head, at the base of the skull, like on your hairline, um, also in the groin at, at the hairline. Um, and if there's areas in your body, like the back of your head, for example, that you might not be able to easily see, have a friend check for you. When you're done with your hike, take your clothes, stick them in the machine, wash them well in warm water and detergent. And again, when you're with your pet, obviously you need to check to check them carefully as well. Uh, with respect to your home, um, other than the brown dog tick, uh, most ticks are, are happy to stay outside of the home. Although within the home, the brown dog tick seems to be particularly comfortable. Yeah. Um, yeah. Cracks, crevices, and sleeping areas should receive special attention, as well as your pet's bedding. Um, and when you're like, if you're at home looking for a brown dog tick, you don't have to look high. Look low. They, they don't like to be high. They're at the, about the same level as your dog. And if you have products, this is kind of nasty. That control cockroaches, they will also control the brown dog tick. Again, you know, re read read labels. Yeah, yeah. As far as outside, cut your grass. Trim your shrubs, um, especially, obviously, the ones that are near your home. Remove the weeds, the brush, and the leaf litter uh, that's close to your home to reduce, you know, potential tick problems. Well, you know, one of the things, Dr. Carroll, I wanted to ask you about is this idea of all of us being educated, well-informed, and really stepping into the forefront of what we know and what we learn. You know, tell me something in terms of what you have discovered along the way that you're finding that people uh, uh, can, can get on board quickly. That's my question. It's really one of, look, you know, there's a lot of information out there. What can we say to people to say, look, you don't have to absorb it all in one day, but certainly if you have any question, right, be safe rather than sorry. Is that the motto here today? Absolutely. The sooner you find something out, a, a tick problem, a disease condition, a lump or a bump, the sooner you address it, the better your chances are that it can be eliminated and the, the individual, be it the person or the pet, can then enjoy a, a happy, healthy life. But to, de to deny it or to avoid it or try to pretend like it isn't there, quite honestly, you're not doing yourself any, no. any favors at all.
No, we're not doing ourselves any favors at all. You know, what would you say, I think, is one of the greatest misconceptions we have right now when we're talking about our animal friends? And so let me just give you, a, you know, a couple of questions that are coming in here. Uh, one of the questions is, are, is one type, Dr. Carroll, thank you, Dr. Pat, is one type of animal more prone than another. Wow, what a great question this is. I didn't even think of this. You know, for example, um, I have birds. Uh, you know, do birds get ticked by? This is a great question, Dr. Carroll. Well, actually, believe it or not, songbirds carry ticks. Yeah, yeah. You, you wouldn't. Uh, you wouldn't have thought that, uh, but but is it is the true? Actually, over sixty species of animals. Uh, carry ticks, mice, chipmunks, raccoons, squirrels, lizards, and many popular songbirds. Wow. Believe it or not. Wow. Yeah. I have another question along the same lines. My daughter uh, has taken up horseback riding, and we'd love to see her ride horses. Uh, and I had never thought about uh, I had not th- never thought about horses and ticks. Usually I think about horses and flies. Uh, do you have any information about Lyme disease via uh, horses? You know, that's, that's, a, that's great a great question. question. Um, and all kinds of animals are subject to tick disorders, dogs, cats, cattle, etc. But horses are not one that has ever come up uh, on, on a list, to, to, to my knowledge. Yeah. So the truth of the matter is, I don't really know why a horse couldn't get, like, you know, right. a tick-borne disorder. Right. But in my experience, I have never heard it. I've never read about it. So it's a good question, and I'm going to have to look that answer up for you and let you know next time. Yeah. Well, aren't, isn't it true that what we're doing now is where all of us are educating ourselves? You know, all of us are out there with uh, the best that we can to try to gather information about what it is we should be more mindful of. But, you know, you are discovering this day in and day out by the people that are coming through your doors, Dr. Carol. So I want to ask you, I would love for you to give us a couple of examples of what you've seen so that our audience can have a sense of a this is what to look for and b look this is what we can do yeah and 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 while you were talking i did a quick check okay and the caller with the horses yes horses can get lyme's disease as well as other tick-borne disorders wow just, just so that that um person whose daughter is riding horses which i encourage um horses are subject to tick-borne disorders but i don't think that it's very popular Right. Wow. And when it comes to the health of your pet, what what I would say is an ounce of prevention is always worth far more than a pound of cure. When it comes to what you feed your pet, the best thing I can tell you is keep your pet lean, always feed at least two meals a day, and talk to your veterinarian or your health care provider, if if, if you will, you know, about good nutrition. Remember that you are what you eat, and so is your pet. So I'm I'm all about homemade diets as an integrative veterinarian. Nutrition is one of the key areas that we tackle pretty much on on a daily basis. Um, Nothing is more important than what you put into your mouth. That applies to you and I, Dr. Pat, as as well as to our four-legged friends. So if you're trying... To get the most for your pet, feed your pet properly, maintain a lean body weight. What that means is that you should be able to easily feel but not see each rib, and your dog should have a waist, which is a tucked up area just in front of the hind legs. Obesity today affects over 50% yeah. of, of dogs, cats, unfortunately, and humans, diseases, cancer, diabetes, kidney disease, diabetes, et cetera, um, are, are, are rampant right now. Yeah. And, and a large part of the problem is that, that we're overfeeding our little four foot, four-legged friends. Yeah. And a better way to show your love for your pet, if you take them on a nice walk a couple times a day, offer them some fresh vegetables. When I tell people that their pets are a little bit heavy, whatever they're feeding, you can cut it in half and replace that half with fresh vegetables. 
dogs love broccoli, and one cup of broccoli has almost twice as much protein as a cup of beef. How about that? I love it. And let's talk about this because we're going we're to go ahead and skip the break for a number of reasons, but primarily because we're talking about building up the immune system. So really, this is what this is about, because this is also something, Dr. Carol, that you do. I mean, whether people are, are looking at what you're providing, this is something that you absolutely have been, you, you know, someone that has been out in the forefront about total wellness, I mean, is it ex- really it, though? That, that's exactly right. And one of the big things I'd like to say to all the pet-loving yeah. listeners out there is don't, have, don't allow your pet to be over-vaccinated. Oh, okay. No pet today receives vaccines on a yearly basis. Leptospirosis is a disease that is so old and so outdated, the fact that they still have a vaccine for it makes me scratch my head. But... <laughs> The standard today is three-year vaccines, and many states, including Ohio, believe it or not, now accept titers. And a titer is a blood test that is sent out to the lab that documents that your pet is protected against rabies, distemper, uh, parvovirus, as well as hepatitis. So I see these animals, particularly older older animals, excuse me, Mm -hmm. age seven and up, senior citizens, those vaccines are not boosting your pet's immunity. Unfortunately, it is exactly the opposite. So do be careful about that, and don't be afraid to ask your veterinarian if he or she would run an antibody titer. Uh, the other thing, especially in older pets, find a vet or find someone. We do anesthesia-free dentals, and although it might not be the most perfect dental in the world, they're very effective. They get off all that plaque in, in the tartar, um, and, and, and we, we do a nice job of that. So be, be careful with those things. And when you're not sure, get a second opinion. Yeah. And this is really, you know, also a great time for us to also talk about, you know, the idea that um, you, you know, part of, as you talked about before, part of the healing, right, is not just a one size. I mean, we started out by talking about integrative, right? And talking about how you've been in the forefront of this. And for those folks that are listening and they're not even familiar what that even means, I think we should take a moment and just share this and, and, and tell folks a little bit about what that means for you and how you're practicing that with, uh, with animals. Yeah. As an integrative veterinarian, what that means is that, is that we integrate or combine traditional medicine that we learned in veterinary school with natural holistic therapies. And that way we can minimize the toxic prescription type medications and, and try to optimize the health and wellness for each individual animal. So we use a lot of natural products. We use uh, Chinese herbs, essential oils natural vitamins and supplements, and then again, lots of really good nutrition. So we make up homemade diets for dogs, for cats. We we tailor them uh, for kidney disease. We have anti-cancer diets. These diets can be tailored for all kinds of different things, and, and they definitely affect immunity in a very positive way. Uh, as an anti-aging um, practitioner myself, um, I studied the human anti-aging methods for four years, yeah. took a great big test, which made me uh, the first veterinarian to also be board certified in anti-aging medicine, something which is not formally recognized in the world of veterinary medicine, but something which I put together a, a series of about 45 different antioxidants, vitamins, minerals, herbs, and immune boosting factors. I rolled them all up into a tasty treat uh, that's called PAWS, P-A-A-W-S. And I can tell you that we have small breed dogs, 25 to 35 pounds, going strong at age 24. We have large and giant breed dogs who normally enjoy a much shorter lifespan than a smaller medium breed dog, for example, going strong at age 18. And, And so what I'm trying to say is that Over 90% of the degenerative disorders that we associate with aging, everything from cancer, diabetes, kidney, liver disease, et cetera, for the most part, these diseases can be reversed 
They can be halted. And in many cases, these organs can be regenerated so that these animals can enjoy life after, you know, these critical diagnoses are are given in in, in many cases. Um, So proper supplementation, minimal vaccines, excellent nutrition, keeping your pet lean, and yes, visit your vet, you know, at least at least once or twice a year. Make sure your pet's, you know, teeth are clean. Take care of the skin and hair coat. Um, just basic, simple things that are incredibly effective, and, and there's so many people out there, even with, with kidney disease, they get a diagnosis, they think it's forever. It doesn't have to be forever at all. We can reverse that. We can get the kidneys to start functioning again so that the animals can, can still enjoy, you, you know, year, years and years of, of, of a good life. Yeah, and really what we're talking about here is if we might, you know, jump to it, a great way to kind of, you know, summarize the show today is what we're really talking about is something you've been doing for, you know, quite some time, Dr. Carroll, and that is wellness. We really are talking about promoting wellness, aren't we? We we, we definitely are. And and I think one of the things that's unfortunate is some of these chains are out there and they call it wellness. But what it really is, is every vaccine known to man, every vaccine and every chemical product. They're telling people to use heartworm and flea products on a year round basis for all animals, eight weeks of age and up, regardless of where they live. These things are very wrong. You know, things like these type of recommendations are set by what they call the American Heartworm Society, which is a group of five multi-billion dollar pharmaceutical companies that make heartworm products. Yeah. So when you live, you know, in areas and it's snowing outside, believe me, there are no mosquitoes. It's impossible to get heartworm disease, and as long as your home is clean, there are no fleas. So you need to be smart. We need to give minimal dosing of these toxic products. Instead of 30 days, we normally recommend 45 to 60. And when the weather changes, when you get that first frost, stop the product, the products. Let your dog's body detox. And for people that have animals with various disorders that can't tolerate those toxic products, again, we have natural alternatives. For example, the essential oil of catnip is as effective as DEET when it comes to mosquito control. So, you know, you really just have to think about these things carefully, do your homework, talk to your friends, talk to your veterinarian, and decide what makes sense to you. But some of these blatant recommendations to vaccinate every year, uh, you know, and give these heartworm and flea products on a year-round basis, that is not in the interest of our pets. Um, It is in the interest of the financial institutions getting more and more of your hard-earned dollars, but it's definitely not in the best interest of your pet. Well, and they can call you too, Dr. Carroll. I mean, this is what you are so brilliant at doing. You have made yourselves uh, seriously available for people to call and to get some questions and get some answers because sometimes they may live in a place like I do where when you even bring the subject up, you're immediately dismissed. So they can call you as well. They can absolutely call. You can also visit us on Facebook, facebook.com forward slash pause, P-A-A-W-S, which stands for Pet Anti-Aging Wellness System. Um, And we've got, I I don't know, about 6,000 people on there, all kinds of great conversations and information. I love it. And here's what I want to ask you. One last minute left here on the show. Personal message, Dr. Carroll. Thank you so much. What do you want to leave us with today? Well, thank you, Dr. Pat, and I've enjoyed sharing this time with you and all your pet-loving listeners, and I think that pets today are so important, and for everybody that's able to enjoy life with a pet, I think it makes life just that much better. Absolutely. Dr. Carol Osborne, everybody, Dr. Pat here from the Dr. Pat Show and Lime Talk Radio. All of you for asking your questions, for tuning us in, turning us on. Please tell your friends and guess what? If you've missed any part of this, we'll make sure we get it edited and get it up. We'll see you next time. 
for listening to Lime Talk Radio with Dr. Pat Basili, epic healing for an epic life. This inspiring show highlights leading edge solutions, groundbreaking research, headline topics, and tools for holistic healing and wellness. This hit show is dedicated to raising awareness, promoting advocacy and prevention, and supporting initiatives for optimal health. Dr. Pat is passionate and focused on life saving results reaching far beyond Lyme disease, providing a forum for powerful stories, heart opening experiences, and hope activated solutions. Dr. Pat will shine a light on the many shades of Lyme disease fueled by a body, mind, spirit remedy. For more information, visit LimeTalkRadio.com and tune in next time.